welcome to blog number four, me learning to play the Anglo concertina. Um, I'm persevering with this Honor D40 because I can't uh, seem to get hold of any better at the moment, but I'm working on it and we'll see what happens in due course. Uh, the piece I was playing there uh, is a tune called Boys of the Town, which is an Irish tune that I play on the mandolin and I thought it would work pretty well on the Anglo and I was right. Um, I'm doing it in the key of uh, G, lots of row crossing, and uh, the first part of it is all on the push, so I've got this all on the left hand side, there's not much on the right hand side, only a couple of notes, so I'm trying to keep it fairly low pitched, and then a few on the pull, back to the push, and when I do that bit there, playing those two notes together, as I play them, um, I put a little note on my tab, air, and I give the air a little bit of a squirt, so that my bellows come out ready to start the next bit, that's all on the, all on the push. I'll do all that from the beginning. Now when I push the air button there, I obviously pull a bit harder, because obviously as soon as you push the air button, you lose a bit of compression, so you need to make up for it, I think, with a bit of extra oomph, and in this case it's on the pull. Then it starts again. And this time it goes, um, it ends on the push. Last time it ended on the pull, when I did the air button, but this time it's the same buttons, but on the push. Uh, the second page gives us the B part, and it starts with a load of notes on the pull, and then we've got some push notes, and this is the same as before. Same again. And that section is the same as before. Um, on the right hand side of my tablature I've put the notes that I use in this, the notes range from the low D on the uh, uh, G row here, and F sharp is the same button, so pushing its D, pulling its F sharp, and I've got E uh, here, and then I've got G and A on this button. I've got two Bs, one here on the push, one here on the pull. I've got C here on the pull and D here on the pull. And those are the notes that I use in the tune. So quite a straightforward little tune and I'm really uh, enjoying that. I've only figured it out this morning so it's obviously not too hard but quite a nice little tune to play uh, using this Anglo. Um, I must show you something I did the other day. This isn't a tune, it's something I did on my funny old Rosetti Rambler. Um, real cheapy that I bought, it's the first one I bought, first Anglo I bought, and I, one of the notes was flat, one of the but, one of the, um, the buttons was giving me a flat note on the, on the drawer, and so I, I tuned it, I took it apart, and I found which read it was, and using one of my wife's nail files, um, I wouldn't do that to one of my really expensive boxes, but to this one it didn't matter really, I tuned this, this button, and listen to the sound. I really like that. It sounds a bit like a violin, doesn't it? In fact, nothing like a violin, but it's a good sound, isn't it? So it's tuned very wet. Getting that lovely tremolo. That was a, a pure fluke. But that note was... That note was really out of tune. Now it's in tune, and also, quite flukily, I've got that rather nice tremolo, but I don't think I'll, I'll chance my luck doing this to any of my other boxes. Luckily my expensive boxes are all banging tune, uh, but this one, being a funny old thing, I didn't really matter much what I did to it, and uh, I got lucky there, I think. I think the cat made an appearance there, didn't it? Good old Susie. Um, let's show you another piece that I'm working on. I can't play this yet, um, but I'm really enjoying doing it. There's a guy on uh, concertina.net called Gary Coover who lives in Hawaii and he's written a few um, books of tunes and some tutor books for the um, Anglo Concertina and they're really good. 
uh, and he put up a, a free sample of um, an Irish gin from his book of Irish gins and this is called the Lilting Banshee um, and I tried it out and I really liked it in fact I've ordered his book of Irish gins which should be coming in the post in the next few days to set a notification so it's on its way so I'm really excited about that and I've been really loving learning this tune I can't play it yet but I'm going to give you a bit of a, a work in progress on this this one's in the key of A Dorian or in the scale of A Dorian uh, which means to say that you've got A up to A uh, but you've got the F sharpened so uh, broadly speaking you've got A B C D E F sharp G and A uh, those are the notes we're using it and uh, I like the way Gary's arranged this. Um, obviously, there's lots of duplicate notes on this instrument, and I like the way he's used the duplications really sensibly. I've put in a few air button um, notifications so I know when to, to press the air, and uh, I'll give you a little bit, bit of a burst of it. Um, That's the kind of A part there. And notice that I'm using the air button there, hopefully in the right place. Um, show you what I mean. There, on the, on the push, because obviously I need the bellows closed to do the, that great long run of um, draw notes. Right, the second time ending here, once you've repeated the beginning, is like this. You've got that run up, which I really like. It's good fun to play that. And what that is, is a B on the left hand side, a C on the right hand side, and a D on the left. Counting five or six as one, two, three, four, five or six. You want to count it as a triplet. So you've got it goes into that bit there. So you've got that little triplet um, and you play D as your last note and you pull out to get the E, same button, to go into the B part. Air button again. And that run up there, lots of notes on the pull. Um, in and out there on that button to get F sharp G, F sharp G, and then the same again. And again, that lovely triplet there. So I'm going to do the second time ending into the B part. again and then you go through it again as I say I can't play it properly yet but I'm getting sort of the general drift of it and it's a really good fun piece to play so I'm, I'm looking forward to getting this polished off and also to uh, trying some tunes from Gary's book when it comes so I did say that last time it might be my last um, blog on the Anglo so obviously it wasn't um, I'm going to stick with it I'm making loads of inquiries about getting a better Anglo so far I've had no luck, I've missed a few uh, that I was after, but I uh, guess that happens. Eventually I'll, I'll come up with the right um, instrument and I will move on. But I'm, I'll always be eternally grateful to this Hona D40 for getting me into this. Um, and uh, even that may not be the best box in the world, it's been a good friend to me these last, um, well, this last week and a half or so. So anyway, I hope you're finding uh, this interesting, my journey with this fantastic instrument. Uh, that's the end of blog four and we'll see what happens in blog five. Thanks for watching.